Uh, the session is called Get a Perfect 100 in Google PageSpeed, and what will happen if you don't? So, so let's say your site just went live after being under construction for months. You know, you got Redis, Varnish, CloudFront, Fastly, you're on some super jumbo, extra large instance. You know, you are, you are ready for anything that's gonna get thrown at you. You are prepared. But you wonder, you know, how's this gonna work on a slow internet connection? Um, but you say, oh, I have HTTP2 up and running. My site should be faster than lightning. It's behind a CDN. But you still kinda wonder, well, how can I verify that? Is there a tool? And I say, yes, there is. And the tagline for PageSpeed is says, uh, make your website, or your web pages fast on all devices. And so even from your desktop to your mobile, that's, that's the goal here. And so this is an actual score uh, from a real live Drupal site that uses Google, Google Analytics and everything else. Uh, the trophy, though, is fake. Um, you don't get that if you get a 100. I tried. Um, and this is a different site. Uh, let's just say it rhymes with Box 17. Um, so it's a TV station here. <laughs> and yeah, this is this is a real uh, that's a real score. So that's uh, Channel 17 here in Nashville. And so some of you might be saying, big deal, you know, I don't get paid to do this. So why should I care? You know, I'm, I'm just going after the money. Why, you know, my client's not caring about this. And so this is why you should care. Um, Google is gonna start taking page speed into account on their search rankings. So this is definitely now a SEO play and marketing loves SEO as everybody knows. And then, quick audience poll. Um, how many people have passed a slow car? Um, you know, just you're angry and you're like, this guy's going so slow. Any, anybody? Yeah, I've done that too. So yeah, the, the idea here is that, um, you know, everybody hates waiting, and do you really think that all of your users are gonna wait for that slow page to load on their phone? Um, Google actually estimates that 50% of users will leave if it takes longer than three seconds to load. That's like first paint. If it doesn't happen in three seconds, you're gonna lose about 50% of all the people coming. So if you're doing an ad campaign, you're, you're half as effective as you could be. And also, if it, if it loads slow, um, people might associate your brand or your website, whatever you're trying to do, with being a frustrating product, and you don't want to do that. And um, you know, this, is, this is why front-end performance matters to me, because all the work that I've done on this site, um, no one's going to see it, because it'll never load on their phone. And the other really critical thing is, Net neutrality, um, depending on how that goes, they might implement slow lanes, and you want to make sure that your site will work even in the slow lane of a uh, net neutrality future we're not sure of. Okay, so you're like, all right, I get it, I get it. This really matters. What can I do? And so you run the tool, and you're like, oh, it's easy. I just need to eliminate render blocking JavaScript and CSS and above the fold content. <laughs> And a lot of you are like, I know all the words, but in that order, maybe not. Well, fortunately, I'm here to guide you on how to get to that elusive, perfect score. So we're going to be going through the rules that um, Google uses. And we're, I'm going to start from the ones that I see the most often. And we'll go down from there. All right, so first up, remove render blocking JavaScript. Um, Long story short, don't use um, JavaScript to paint the page, because that just means that your page is waiting for um, you know, the, the JavaScript to load before it will start. Um, so you need to put scripts in your footer. Luckily, D8 does that by default. Um, 
And then if you can defer those as well, that's ideal. And there's a bunch of little tricks with um, set timeouts and jQuery's hold ready, um, things that you might need to do depending on what you have done. And we'll, um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, and then this is the big one, optimize CSS delivery. If optimizing a website was a game, I would call this the boss level. Um, it's hard, and this is the boss at the end of the internet that you need to beat. So people always joke about, oh, the boss at the end of the, end of the internet, that's really hard. This is the boss, it's really hard. And so, structurally, what it's gonna look like is you're gonna have your inline CSS that's gonna be generated via some Node.js scripts and then you're gonna load your CSS files using rel preload. So that's structurally, that's the change that it, it's gonna make. And just to give you an idea, rel preload, that did not work in Firefox two months ago. So this is um, definitely groundbreaking stuff here. And once you figure out that CSS needs to change on almost every page, because every page looks different, um, you know, this turns into an eight by eight Rubik's Cube level difficulty. Uh, you know, this is, this is starting to really creep up there in terms of how difficult this can be. Uh, luckily, uh, there's a couple tools to help. So if you just wanna go, just give me the straight Node.js page to do it, um, the project. That's gonna be, uh, I think it's Penthouse. Um, and then if you wanna have a web page that will spit out the Java, the CSS for you automatically. There's a couple of sites that will do that. And then there's actually a Chrome browser plugin. So if you're, um, if you're behind a firewall that can't, you, you can't have anything outside access it, there's actually a Chrome plugin that will generate the critical CSS for you, which is awesome. And so if you're using Drupal, the AdVeg module um, will actually take care of optimizing the CSS. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, it's not fully automated, so if you wanna have it set up where it's just like, I ship my code and it's done, I'll be probably setting up a service here called fixrenderblocking.com. Um, that is not working currently, but that is something I plan on to do just because I saw how difficult it is to actually automate this. And so, you know, now that you have it, um, you still need to use a, uh, the rel preload um, shim, and that is the load CSS that will do that for you. And so, you, know, you can check this box off until you change your CSS or your HTML. So it's, it's something that will continually have to be done. And so this is why I say it's the boss level of the internet. It's, these are usually really hard to do. This is the hardest one. <coughs> All right, so up next, optimize images. There is a um, module called Image API Optimize. And what you want to do is install JPEG Tran and PNG Quant. Both of those are um, command line tools. And then that module will then use those command line tools to um, optimize your images and you'll create an image style which you then um, you just can add that uh, part to all your image styles and it'll automatically optimize your images um, and you may even want to set up a cron job that will then find and run um, those two programs to just optimize any images on your server that's currently what we do because even with um, the image style certain images still get through and we just found it's just do everything all the time, make sure it's optimized. Leverage browser caching, all right, this sounds fun. Um, you know, the cache, that's, uh, that's the browser cache, so we're talking about Firefox or Chrome. We're not talking about memcache, Redis, or you know, the database cache. And you know, you're like, oh cool, this, this is great until you run it and you see, oh, Google Analytics is in there. And so Google's complaining about their own tools, <laughs> which kind of sucks. Um, so there's two ways you can do this. 
you can uh, host it locally or you can use um, a project called GA Lite, which then you can cache forever. It uses the API for Google. And so just depending on what you want to do, you can go either way and that will take care of this project, this part of this for you. Um, and once again, for Advag, there is, um, it will use option one here and it has a cron job that will continually check to see if that source file's changed and it will then pull it down for you. Improved server response time. So this is where I'd say 99% of most performance talks goes is just how can we get the server faster? How can we get that content delivered to the person quicker? But once it hits their browser, um, how it gets rendered is actually a lot more important than how it gets delivered from what I've seen. Um, and so if you do want to do this, you just need to enable like core caching, throw up Cloudflare, you know, there's a free um, tier for that and you'll be good to go. But if not, then, you know, talk to um, one of the uh, hosting platforms here and they'll probably take care of this for you. Minify resources, um, you can do a quick search for how to do this. There's a lot of guides on how to do this. For CSS, core will actually do it. Um, JavaScript, the Advig module, and then HTML, you're gonna use Minify HTML. That's a new module that just came out recently. Prioritize visible content. Um, this one sometimes shows up, but usually if you fix other things, um, this will disappear. But um, if you have a loading screen, so if your page comes up and you have a little spinner spinning and then your page loads, uh, you, you will get this uh, warning. And the other way you can get this is if you have white text in a white background, and then that background div loads in an image and then you can see the text. And so what you'd wanna do in that case is make sure that that div is not white, the background, so that way you can read the text before the image shows up. And then this one usually doesn't happen, avoid landing page redirects. Um, and this will help with the server response time. But you know, one level of redirecting is okay, so if you go from HTTP to HTTPS, or if you go from um, www to the non version, or from the non to the www, you know, that, that one level is fine, but if you go more than that, um, you don't want to do that, and you definitely don't want to use m.domains. That's kind of outdated. Um, you want to make your whole page responsive, so the same site will serve the same users. And then enable compression, gzip or Brotly. Um, once again, the Advig module will gzip and Brotly uh, your CSS and JavaScript for you. HT access might be needed. Um, but there's, there's guides on how to do this. It's pretty easy. And so a quick recap, you know, that's the goal. Um, and so sometimes a 100 is not possible. Um, iframes usually cause it, um, maps, videos, anything that's above the fold that is um, rendering like that, that's usually really hard to then get a 100. And I found that if you have a Google map, that's almost impossible. You'll get it like a 98, which is still pretty good. All right, so a quick recap. Advig will cover these following rules. And the ones with asterisks, um, those are being worked on for Drupal 8. Currently, everything is Drupal 7 because the site I work on is Drupal 7. I get paid to do this. Um, I don't get paid to do Drupal 8, so it's a slow porting process, but the module exists, it does work, and hopefully by summertime, this will all be available in Drupal 8. Other rules not covered by Advig, you have the optimized images, minify HTML, and then the rest of these um, should kind of um, fall into place, usually. All right, so that sounds really hard to do on every page, right? 
So luckily, you only need to do this on your landing pages, and that's, you know, if you do a search, they come in, they hit that page, that's a landing page, any, um, you know, any page that is their first visit, consider that a landing page and try to optimize it. So, let's do a little quick demo here. So this is Simply Test Me. I'm gonna spin it up and show you how easy this is to do. So we're first gonna test it here. So out of the box, you get a 54 out of 100. And so we're gonna go ahead and log in. And we're gonna enable a couple modules. First, we're gonna get rid of overlay because no one likes that. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, just in the readme, I tell you exactly what sub-modules to enable. And then you're just gonna go to the configuration, go to performance tab, we're gonna go ahead and enable the page cache and the um, aggregation. And then here in AdVeg, you're just gonna use the recommended settings for just about everything. And it's uh, pretty easy to set up. So we're just gonna go through here. This is if you have HTTP one or two, um, simply test me is on 1.1, so use the 1.1 settings. And right now we're gonna compress the JavaScript. And so we'll have a little batch operation. Boom, there we go, it's compressed. Just do a couple more settings here. And now we get to the critical CSS. I saved the best for last. So we're gonna go to um, this website and just pop it in there. It's gonna check, figure out the critical CSS for you. And then you just copy that, go back, paste that in. And we're going to go ahead, hit save. We're gonna clear the cache. And let's go see what our score is. So we got a 99 out of 100, which is uh, pretty good. If Simply Test Me um, actually used the HT access rules that ship with Drupal, this would have been a 100 out of 100. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's that easy. You can do this really quick. So a couple pitfalls to avoid if you wanna go for that 100. If you have your CSS or JS hacked in versus using the API, um, JavaScript that renders on the client, um, inline JS that doesn't work well if it's deferred, External fonts that are not loaded from Google. So AdVeg will take care of Google fonts. I haven't done other fonts yet. Um, the tricky one here is if you have extremely strict content security, content security policy headers, it's a mouthful, um, those won't actually allow inline CSS. So that if you're extremely PCI compliant, you might need to, um, there's a couple things you can do, but it's a little bit tricky. You have to like hash the CSS and it's a big pain in the butt. Um, and in the case of simply test me, a server config that can't be adjusted. So I can't adjust anything on the simply test me page. And so I can only get a 99 out of 100. So I say uh, congratulations. You beat the boss at the end of the internet. His name is Al Capone. Um, <laughs> He's an old-timey mob boss, but you know, you beat it. Um, and I'm, I'm a dad, so I can get where I can say those cheesy jokes, right? And so you might be saying, okay, that's cool, but give me some alternatives. I don't know about all these Drupal modules. I want to do it slightly differently. Well, here we go. How to get a high page score if not using Drupal, or you don't want to use certain modules. So Google PageSpeed. <laughs> Um, it's a Apache and Nginx server-side plugin. Um, so this means it's gonna require some configuration, but it's a pretty quick win. And I found that if you wanna, if the image stuff is too hard, just use the um, image one. There's a bunch of rules in here, and there's a couple that have to do with images in here, and you just use those to handle your images, and then you use AdVeg to handle everything else. So you can kind of mix and match both options. The other option is if you love Node.js, there's a project called Blink Loader, and that's just gonna do Node.js all day long for all these things, and it'll get you 
pretty close to 100 out of 100. And then the more controversial one is Google AMP. Um, if you implement AMP correctly, you will get close to 100. Uh, I've never seen an AMP page actually get a 100. But um, you know, it is something to consider. Uh, it does take time to implement. And so I say, do the quick route first, see if that works for you, and then see if you still need AMP or if you're good without it. Because th there is some controversy around AMP if you research it. All right, so we got a little challenge here. Um, I'm gonna give you $5 right now if you can get a 100 out of 100 on a, on a Drupal site that you currently run. <laughs> and so I'm gonna read this fine print because it's not up there. Um, your site is not all text. It needs to be a perfect 100 on mobile and desktop. And if there's a group of you, you get $10 is the limit for that group. <laughs> um, and so come see me afterwards, and I'll start giving you guys $5 bills. So I'm just going to leave that right there. <laughs> All right, so this is the website. So go ahead, punch that in. Um, see what you get on your score. And if you need to search for it, just look for Google uh, PageSpeed Insights. <laughs> All right, so while everyone's doing that, um, some of you might be wondering, well, what popular site is currently working to improve its PageSpeed score? Glad you asked. All right, I'm going to work with Drupal.org. So um, Drupal.org uses the AdVeg module. It's been using it for about two or three years. Um, and up until a couple months ago, we've been trying to get to that 100 out of 100, and the AdVeg module is key to make this, making this happen. Um, so far, the, sh the results show some big improvements. Um, one of the more interesting ones was we looked at Google Analytics, and the UC browser averages, average page load time went from 13.3 down to 5.4 seconds. Um, and that's a mobile-only browser that's used by half a billion people in China, India, and Indonesia. So it's, it's a, you know, not your typical U.S. market, but elsewhere this really starts to add up and matter. Because you're talking from a 13-second page load down to 5.4. I mean, that's huge. And this is not with the 100. This is about a, I'd say a 70 or 80 with uh, Drupal.org currently. And so, um, yeah, like I said, we're currently working on um, getting this to 100. The final key is generating that critical CSS. And once I saw the issues that were coming up, that's why I decided to create a uh, service to, to make that happen if you want to have it completely automated. You can have it fully automated on your own server, which is what Drupal.org will be doing. But not everyone has op awesome DevOps team, so I was like, okay, this isn't going to work for everyone, so um, that will be launching in a little bit. All right, so quick show of hands, did anyone get a 100? Anyone? All right, you guys got homework to do. So, you know, the quick question is, you know, if you're spending $12,000 a month on hosting, why can't you do that? And it's, it's because it has to do with the front end. This is, this is why it matters so much. So you might be saying, okay, cool. I did that, Mike. I spent 10 minutes, got AdVeg set up, and I got a 100 on 100. What's next? Well, one thing you can do is webpagetest.org. And so on the upper corner there is um, the AdVeg Drupal development site and then Drupal.org. And so Drupal.org has multiple advantages here. It's loading from a CDN. It's got H2, whereas the development site's H1.1, um, no CDN. And this was about a week and a half ago when I recorded this, since so the front page has changed. But you can see how in under 30 seconds, it's pretty much fully rendered. And Drupal.org is going to take another uh, 40 seconds there. 
And so this is on a mobile edge connection. And so if, you, if you're on your phone and you see the little E up there, that means you're on mobile edge instead of LTE or G, 4G or whatever. Um, is, this makes it really obvious of, in terms of like how slow a, a page load can actually take. And I'll just uh, let it run. Um, and so a couple tricks that we do is we preload resources to optimize the speed index, index metric. So there we go, video is loaded and we're done. So that, it's, you know, it's pretty obvious the advantages that you can get by doing this. Um, so this is what the page looks like. You just punch it in there. I have connection set to mobile edge and I found that you only need to run one test because it just, it's so slow that it'll show you exactly what's wrong. Um, so this is the page that you get. And if you dive in here, we can see we have a start render time of 7.5 seconds. And in this case, um, Google Fonts is what's blocking it. So you can see um, once that font has loaded, then all of a sudden the render starts. And so the whole idea behind this is how can you get the rendering to start right when the HTML is fully loaded? So in this case, that'd be about four and a half seconds. That's, that's what um, it will do for you. And so give me more conceptual ideas. This is what an HTTP2 connection looks like. And so um, you can see various things loading. Once again, the second one down is fonts. And the minute that hits, you see that big bar going all the way down. That is, um, you know, that shows you when the page started to render. And it's real obvious what was blocking is the fonts there. Um, and then compare it to a HTTP1 site. Um, this is the site that I currently run. It's on H1. If you notice, the SSL negotiation takes a lot longer because um, that's one advantage that H2 gives you. But um, if you notice, I'm beating it even though I have that huge handicap there. Um, this loads in about seven seconds. You can see the first vertical bar there is right after the HTML gets loaded. I will show the page. And so that's web page test. The next one that you can use is a lighthouse. This is built into Chrome. So if you want to test stuff that is on your network, um, you know, this works on local sites. It gives you way too much information, in my opinion. It's just, you get overloaded, but it's there. So you can use it. And so this is what the performance page looks like. A lot of stuff you can read about. It gives you a whole bunch of things you can do. Um, talks about progressive web apps with um, service workers, which are pretty cool. Um, one of the things that says, does not respond with a 200 went offline, which is kind of wacky if you think about it. So it's basically if you have, you're in a cave and you have no cell phone reception, you could, in theory, access the web page with a service worker. And so it's kind of mind blowing what that can do and this will help you achieve that goal. Um, accessibility, this will cover about 25% of what accessibility should do, so it's a good start. It's something to be aware of, but it's not by any means full coverage. Um, SEO and some best practices. So that was uh, Lighthouse, and then if you wanna use something crazy, Chrome User Experience Report. So. As you all know, Google collects, collects a lot of data, and anywhere the Chrome browser runs, um, you can figure out the page load time on that device for any website. And this is all available for free, um, and there's a YouTube video where they talk about this at, um, at Google when they kind of introduce this thing. And it's, if you really want to get to the nitty gritty details, that's how to do that. I'm not gonna get into it because it's like 10 hours of work, but you can do it. All right, so some of you might be wondering, what's gonna happen if I don't go for that 100 out of 100? You're like, you know, this is great, Mike, but I don't wanna spend those precious minutes setting this up. I'm just gonna sit back and do nothing. <laughs> 
Well, you know, just remember that Google's going to roll out this huge change here in a couple months. Um, page speed is going to be a ranking factor. And, um, you know, users on a slow connection are going to give up and leave before the page even loads. Um, yeah, and to recap, you're going to have money that was coming your way. You know, you could have had the money come in your way. <laughs> but, you know, because the page didn't load on the phone, it's not going to happen. And so, um, you know, you may think you're done, but I say just check your score. Make sure you have a 100. And if not, see what you can do to fix it. So, you know. Slow sites leave uh, money on the table. I think that's pretty obvious there. Um, you know, just one second faster can give you a huge boost in conversion rate. And so speed matters. And so um, if you have any, we have sprints coming up um, tomorrow. And you can go ahead and rate this um, session and I'll go ahead and take q and got a couple sites loading up here to see. Um, so you can see Drupal.org and then current company I work for, Datasphere. It's got all the handicaps, but it still loads the quickest. And then the one in the far corner, it cheats. So that gets a 96 out of 100. But you can see it's just a spinner slowly spinning around. And so uh, cheating won't fool the user even though it might fool uh, the, the robots. So something to, to be aware of is you can game the system, but uh, your users are still going to leave. So yeah. All right, any questions? OK, so um, the void landing page redirects. Our site redirects. Um, there's nothing we can do about it because mm -hmm. we redirect to our Drupal site. Um, how does that affect the score? So that's going to um, affect your initial first um, push out of the HTML. And so if you can get if it's below 500 milliseconds, half a second, um, it usually won't matter. Okay. And so most people are okay, but if, it, if you're not okay, um, look into getting a CDN, because that will help to lower that um, air bar or whatever. Okay, thank you. Yep. Sorry. You had mentioned something about uh, Google Fonts, mm -hmm. doing something with them in the module you made. Yes. Um, what is that and what can we do on non-Google Fonts or if we aren't using that module to get the same optimizations? Um, well, there's a uh, PageSpeed uh, Apache plugin that will actually pull in those Google fonts as well. Um, so you can use that. Uh, but I basically parse the, I request the font using different browsers. So because you need to get different fonts, font types. Mm -hmm. And then I pull that in and put it in the um, inline CSS. So a couple steps if you want to manually do it. Um, feel free to look at the source code if you want to see exactly what's going on. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If a site does not use a CDN, will it be impossible for it to get a perfect 100? No, not at all. Um, that middle site there, it's HTTP 1.1, no CDN, and it gets a perfect 100. And if a site does some kind of redirecting, like HTTP to HTTPS or something along those lines, will it be impossible for those sites to get a perfect 100? No, one, one level of redirecting is perfectly I mean, fine. Perfect. It's just if you go from like HTTP to then m.http, which then goes to HTTPS, which then goes to the m.https, you know, if you're zigzagging back and forth until you finally land on it, um, that's kind of what it's talking about. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hey there, I've got a, a CSS workflow question, I guess, where you were copying um, the most important CSS into the Drupal module. What's the, if you have a really large site with a lot of developers working on it, what's the step that you would recommend so that people remember that's there? Because I assume that's overwriting the code that's being compiled? 
Um, it puts it in the head, and uh -huh. so what it means is, you know, CSS is a cascading style sheet, and right. so it puts that in up front, and then as your CSS files load, those will then override what's there, and what's there should be the same, so it doesn't change it. Okay. So um, you wouldn't have to remember to go and paste a change every time? Not every time, but, you know, eventually after X amount of changes or some big redesign, you definitely want to. Right. Um, and let's see here. I think I can pull up a... Uh, Oops. Where's my mouse? So yeah, so here we have critical CSS. Um, one thing you can do is if you want to use a uh, file, um, it will tell you the path. So instead of having this um, GUI interface, you can actually save the file in your theme folder with a special um, URL, well, a special file name, and then based off the URL, it will look up that CSS. And so you can you can support multiple workflows. So on, on build, you could have it check that instead of having to remember yes. to go and paste it in. Yeah, so on build, you could have it um, run your Node.js to generate the critical CSS, dump that into um, the folder here. Okay. And then it will take that and run with it. Awesome, thanks. Yep. Do you have any tips for using uh, the advanced aggregation module on a site that has no shared uh, file system? No shared file system? Right, so if you have a cluster, like the first time the uh, aggregated CSS or JavaScript loads, the database flags it as created, but it's only created on one backend. Is there a way to generate them on all? Uh, currently, no, but um, it's the generation shouldn't be too expensive to do. So is that a problem that you currently have? Yes. Okay, we should talk. Um, I'll be in the uh, sprint room right okay. after this and we can chat. Sounds good. Um, I'm running a site that has multiple third party scripts for you know, A-B testing, mm -hmm. loading like recommendations. Do you think it is impossible to get 100 with things like that, or will advanced aggregation mm -hmm. help with that score? Um, odds are it will help. And so the current ones that I've custom coded for, so it, it kind of has a general like catch all, but certain ones required some extra help. And so we have Google Analytics, um, PWIC, Google Tag Manager, Perfect Audience, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And so all those scripts, um, Facebook was the hardest. I had to like rewrite their code kind of. Um, but the rest of these were relatively easy to do. Um, and that will then make sure that you can get a 100. And so I'd say it, odds are it will work, but I can't guarantee. And if you don't get it to work, you'll still get a, like a 98 or a 99 out of 100, which is really good. So it's, it's not... It's not as bad as you might think. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, when we uh, concatenate and minify the uh, JavaScript, is there like a certain like JavaScript libraries that we shouldn't like concatenate? Um, so I mean, you're talking about what Adveg does with yeah. uh, JS compression? Yeah, like, um, I tr like I think I before I try to concatenate the uh, jQuery and other libraries to other custom JavaScript libraries that I cre created, and then the site like crashed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd, I'd say, Adam, um, don't concatenate them yourself. Uh -huh. So add each file individually, mm -hmm. and then um, this should take care of that. Uh -huh. But if not, um, you know, if, if you have a good example, um, like I said, we'll meet in the sprint room, and you, I'll help you. We'll figure out exactly what the problem is. Okay. Um, but it, this also supports external compression. So if you want to use, if you have a command line one, so you can see here, these take about a second to run. Um, the command line ones will take about two milliseconds. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, you can, right there it says install the JS 
uh, med PHP extension uh, that will run JS compression way quicker. I'll try that module later. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk. Uh, not a question, just wanted to say thanks for becoming a subject matter expert and turning it into Drupal that we can all use. So, all right. thanks. Thank you. And if you guys need help getting this set up, um, I'll be in the sprint room and we can go through one by one and we'll get this up and running on your site. If it's seven, eight, still not there yet, but seven for sure, we can do this. Yeah, yeah, I'll put them up. No, I'll put them up. Uh, Um, it's part of it. I mean, big pipe will help, but that's that's more of like components, like the HTML store. No, it's um, big 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 pipe is more about like you know delivering segments of HTML, and this is more about like getting the CSS to render as quickly as possible. So it, it, they both serve the same goal, just different ways to do it. So, yeah, the initial load speed, that's what big, big pipe helps with. So the accuracy speed load time should Yeah, so you, you base with big pipe you can shrink that initial stage because that's when everything else starts. So that's why server, server performance matters because you need to shrink that and you get more headroom here. So we run into some JavaScript, JavaScript blocking issues. Um, but like, well, I mean, if I got to one JavaScript, mm -hmm. like, how could you take it for the If you put the JavaScript in the footer, yeah, or? Okay. Well, we look through um, the CDN. Doesn't matter. You need to. Um, you need to put it in the footer, or you need to put it, um, have a defer tag on it. So old school um, CDNs in terms of having your HTML on one page, on one domain, and your CSS and JS on different domains, that's kind of an anti-pattern now. Right, so what I mean by this, you need to do a tag management to those JavaScripts. So that, is that valid, or is that a good uh, I'd say put it in the site in the footer, but it, it is dependent. I mean, each each one's different, but I'd say in general, um, don't use Google Tag Manager. Use, um, you know, yeah, yeah. Just put the tracking code directly in. I mean, you know, test test it out and see. So. <laughs> that's really that's good. Our, our mobile, but then that's our desktop, not so much. <laughs> I, was, I was worried I'd actually have to chase it. Yes. If I do this talk again, I'm definitely going to have to sell somebody because everyone knows now. <laughs> Thank you. I'd say the DOM is probably, in analytics, that's probably the most important metric to look at. Yeah. So I DOM loaded. And so like, I have policies, and like, uh, yeah, and like you know, the goals of the app or the mm -hmm. services that like, what other, yeah. do you do yeah. benchmark, like, yeah. yeah. HTTP insights, yeah. and what yeah. you yeah. test yeah. and all that stuff yeah. before, because that and then do it again after. Yeah, I do it before and after. There's um, yeah. other sites that will kind of keep a record of it for you, yeah. um, but I find that the information they give is too confusing. They just, it's like lighthouse. It's just, it's way too much information and you just get overwhelmed and you're like, I don't even know where to start. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like your, um, 
Yeah, so slow is slow, and so it's, you're, you're looking at a 700 millisecond round trip time, so it's really slow ping times, and then your bandwidth is limited to 200 kilobytes per second. So it's, 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 it's the absolute worst possible conditions you can get on your phone. Yeah. yeah, if you have any questions, I'll be in the sprint room just helping people out. All right. Sounds good. Personally, I haven't seen that because um, we are like a portal for our customers and we're 100% logged in. Um, and so it, it's not, for us, that's not the right metric. Um, but I think for Drupal.org, um, you know, they, they saw improved page load times. Um, and so I could see that eventually playing out. It takes a little while for it to kind of catch up to that. You know, it takes time for Google to see, oh, this is a fast page, I'll rank it higher in the search rankings. The thing though is it's not always, it cannot always be attributed to page speed, because that's not the only way you can change the task of a lot of things. So yeah. you have to think other external things that could have to do with or I'm just that around the question. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, because it's such a um, foggy system, no one knows truly how their search rankings work. So it's, it's hard to truly say, this will give you X amount. This is the one thing that's Yeah. <laughs> you can figure out what that one thing is. You'll make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. And so, let's see here, in the critical CSS here. I have um, host names lookup and then URLs preload. And the service that I'll be starting will uh, actually populate those. So it'll, it'll load the page and figure out host names as well as URLs to preload. Yeah, so if you load the page a couple times, you'll get a rough idea of which ones are. Yeah, oh, there's there's sort of some JavaScript file that is pulling stuff in. You, that's the domain you can at least have some control over. Usually, you can get usually about um, one, essentially two levels deep, and after that, it's, it's a crap shoot. But, um, the, yeah, the first lo one or two levels that will help a lot. And that's yeah, because then it does that DNS fetch first before you probably. I mean, if it's right at the page board or whatever, it's already got it. And it's done that look up, and if it's a 700 millisecond round time, you just knock that down to the same round time as your initial one. Yep. Yeah, I've improved it. Yeah, so you can see right here, like, um, so Drupal.org currently um, will do certain lookups, so like the stats double click. Um, there's no domains before that. Actually, I think the connection, yeah, right here. So you can see these three get pre-connected. And so these are ready to go, and when we need it, they get loaded, boom, 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 like that. Mm -hmm. yep. So 
we spoke about uh, speed optimization. Do you want to be more comfortable? I know you've been leaning like this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that looks very good. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a sprint session, right? You need your help. We don't want to hurt your back. Uh, thanks, thanks for that, yeah. uh, Michael. Uh, my question is uh, from the perspective of, uh, we spoke about uh, speed optimization from Drupal. But any thoughts or any uh, research on WordPress? Um, there are other um, things similar to Admin in WordPress that you use it. And so you just kind of look for it. Um, the, the keyword to look for would be critical CSS. If it has that, it probably has everything else because that's the hardest one to do. Sure. But the work that you've done is on Drupal only. Yeah. yeah. Not, not okay. yeah. But, you know, there is um, Apache and Index server side plugins. Oh, I already have that. It won't yeah. get you 100, but it'll get you really close. Yeah, and really close yeah. usually works fine. Yeah. If you're getting like a, a, a 100 is awesome, but if you're getting above 80, yeah, I mean, you got to figure if that's a percentile kind of score, mm -hmm. you're scoring faster than 80% of the sites that they're seeing. Yeah. So it's. it's, it's that's what the. I don't, right? I don't know if it's a percentile, it's a percentile score or not, but it, look, I mean, it says good. And there's other. Yeah, so Lighthouse, I think, maybe shows you. So this there. this right here, the speed average, um, that's something new that they added to PHP Den sites um, at the beginning of the year, right before they did the big announcement, they added that in. And what that does is that gets updated every month, and it pulls from that huge database of all the browsers on all the devices that Google has access to. And it gives you your average speed. And then right here, you can see awesome. page okay, distributions for um, which ones landed where. And so yeah, this is the first content paint. That's like when something shows up. And then um, uh, DCL, that is um, DOM content list. That's when your browser is done. And so those are the two metrics along with the optimization that Google is uh, using. But usually, if you get a 100 or 100, the rest of it will take care of itself. Um, you know, something funny is you put uh, campaign.io through there, it's average. Oh, that is a true nerd Average speed. So. Um, can you take this mic Yeah. Can you talk to the, just the, the weight loss problem that we have with our CSS? Doing optimizations, you know, at the server level, at a compression level, mm -hmm. but you know, like you showed the one where you got, yeah, there's several people on to it. I mean, it's delaying us the design decisions that we're making. Is there a use these six months on this page because it's cool and it's killing you know, the performance? You know, I mean, you're talking even the deferring or delaying some of this stuff, the, just the vast volume of stuff that we're trying to put down. Like, what did you say the, the through rate was on that that edge? Uh, 200 KB a second. <laughs> a second. Yeah. You know, and if you've got, I don't know, four megabytes of JavaScript and another 300 kilobytes of CSS, how do you ever expect to have any sort of good user experience? So our... Um, our page, the company I work for, that gets a 100 or 100. We have fonts. We have. That doesn't kill me. I'm probably about two megs of um, JavaScript, and then um, maybe 500 k of CSS. And so it's it's not necessarily the whole download package. It's just how it, you deliver it. It's how the HTML is rendered. It's how how it's structured. That's what matters. And so. You yeah. can, with all of those constraints, you can get a 100. I understand, but it's still, that's the machine 100. Yeah. The user experience so. 100 where I hit this, like you said, it, we have a slow connection, and it's like, okay, I start to see something. Okay, so I can't interact with the page yet. I mean, it's like locked up. It won't scroll. I gotta wait another 17 seconds. So if you won't get a 100, then. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, the goal is 100. Um, yeah, sometimes, you know, the, 
car. You can't break the laws of physics. That's well, you're talking <laughs> about passing somebody in a car, you know. Okay. I'm, I'm talking about we're trying to do the same thing with a fully loaded 18 wheeler. You know? yep. I mean, we're blowing the horn Galloway. I'm trying to go this fast. It's just it's irresponsible at some point to try to think that this is really possible, long term as possible. I, I mean, and I understand that, you know, there's this disconnect between the developers and designers where. I, I want to have all this cool stuff. I want my site to look and do and whatever. So, I mean, you know, I have a, to have a previous conversation that says AC, AC quad water. Yeah. So, this will uh, we'll show you which fonts are going to be uh, async loaded and which ones are currently not. We can't async this font because then we've got this, you know, flash of unstyled text. Or so, what you can do is uh, prevent the flash of unstyled text. Okay. <laughs> so what that will do if, if they're really sticker stickler about that is the font will not change on the first page. Second page, you will get the font. Gotcha. And so, you know, there has to be a trade off. Right. That's just it. That's and so right. this this gives you that option to trade off based off of what your needs are. Uh, there's got to be some point where there's a pushback or there's an established. No, no, no. Like they really didn't put into a module. They've changed the module. It shows like, uh, looks like your uh, nutrition bar on a package of food. And it shows like your HTML and CSS yeah. and everything and all of the weight of the entire thing. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, at some point there's got to be like a, at least a target. We're going to stay. This is our performance budget. And you can't have everything. You, know, you can to. get pretty close though. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, that's that's the idea here. Is it, this is this is kind of groundbreaking research that you know. I would say I appreciate I, I appreciate this module. I mean, it's, it is absolutely awesome because it does do so many things well, uh, and I, I just think at some point in the kind of the enabling that it does of let's you know well, let's just continue to. Just gonna keep stuffing ourselves <laughs> into a gorge, over, and, you know. Yeah. And there's no consequence, but at some point there is consequence. It's, uh, there's always, you know, even if it's some goofball like me that's got, I don't know. Let me see what what's my current count is 31 tabs of right. Yeah. My phone's gonna slow down at some point on your site. It don't matter mm -hmm. because I'm an idiot, and you know. So. So I mean, you know, that, that goes back to you got to take this to management to your designers to mm -hmm. your marketers and be like, you know, page speed is going to be ranking and SE for SEO purposes. Like this is, this is huge. We need to cut back and, you know, just uh, finding an effective way to communicate that is difficult as, as you have found it's out. It's like the, the, the old uh, classic triangle. You can have speed, cost, or quality. Pick two. Yep. You're not going to get all three. Yep. One of those things you're going to have to sacrifice. And, you know, maybe it's two in a little bit, but you know, there's some there's some balance, I guess, that needs to be talked about um, openly. You know, it just, just can't be quit. Though on the developers, some guys, some genius will come along and figure out a way to, <laughs> to save our day. Uh, maybe not. I mean, in Drupal it works fairly, but I mean, it's you know, it's the laws of physics. You can only right. put some packets through a pipe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Before the pipe blows up or the packets blow up or something goes. Yep. Yeah. Appreciate you working. Yeah. Thanks. Just want to say thank you. Yeah. Enjoy it.